Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of the UCX Unity Catalog Upgrade Companion. In this video, we're going to focus on the installation process. As you saw on the previous video, we have different tasks that you need to be involved while running UCX. In this video, we're going to focus on the installation part. For the installation, the first thing to keep in mind is the prerequisites. So there's different prerequisites, mainly related to the Python version that you need to install, the workspace admin access, so you need admin access to the workspace where you're going to install this, and the networking access. Later, we'll see in detail where you can find this in the documentation. You also need a Datarix CLI. Uh, you can download it uh, depending on the operating system you're using, Mac OS, Windows, Linux. There's different ways you can do that. Here are some examples of how you can do that in Mac OS and Windows. After you have installed the Datarix CLI, you will need to install UCX. To install UCX, you can run the command Datarix Labs install UCX. After that, you will have to answer some prompts that the system will provide. We'll see in detail some of those questions later on. While you're installing UCX, you have an option to customize this installation by setting where do you want to install it. So by default, it will be installed in a global level, so it will be installed in the Applications folder, independent of which user run it, and it will be a global installation for the whole workspace. Generally, this is what you want, because generally you want one installation per workspace. However, if you want to customize this, you can install this at user level, and you can do that by running UCX force install equals user, like shown below. In the documentation, you will find also some combinations of what happens when you have an existing installation and you run uh, different combinations of this UCX force install. So, or either to install or to upgrade. There's also another option called UCX force install equals account, which will install UCX in the whole account in all the workspaces in the account. So once you run the install command, it will ask you different prompts. I'm going to focus on the main ones. The main guideline to keep in mind is that most of the times you would go with the defaults. So it's very likely that most of your answers will just be clicking enter and continuing with the defaults. But here we're, we'll explain some of the most more challenging ones for you to keep in mind. So it will ask you for the number of threads. The number of threads generally is the number of parallelization of the multi-threaded tasks. This is mainly used during crawling and listing of permissions, files, and basically during the assessment that's run uh, as part of UCX. Then you will be asked about the HMS lineage in its script. The lineage in its script is, can be enabled, and this is optional. They, they ask you if you want to enable it. And if you enable it, it will provide the lineage as part of system.hms to uc migration.table access. And you can use that lineage to get deeper reporting knowledge of your Hive Meta Story usage. You will also be asked about the reconciliation threshold. So whenever you run a migration, it will compare how the migrated tables look in comparison to the Hive Meta Store tables. The reconciliation threshold is the permitted margin of error in terms of how many rows your migrated tables have in comparison to your uh, Hive Meta Store tables. This defaults to 5%. The log level is the level of details that the logs will show in the terminal. And also the logs are going to be saved in the UCX slash logs folder. Other options are the following. Workspace group mapping. It will ask you how you want to map your workspace groups to the account level groups. By default, the first option is to do an exact match. That means that your account level groups will have the same name as your workspace level groups. There's also another question about parallelism for migrating DBFS root delta tables with deep clone. This is very specific to cases where there needs to be a deep clone of your table, so generally for managed tables. And this level of parallelism by default is 200. The instance pool ID is if you want to use an existing pool ID or basically an existing instance pool to provide clusters for the jobs. Then the option around workspace blocks internet access is if your workspace has difficulties accessing the, the internet due to security reasons. If you select yes here, it will uh, upload the dependencies so that it doesn't have to access the internet during uh, runtime. Finally, it will also ask you about the catalog to store UCX artifacts. This is a new feature that allows for better UC better tracking of the progress of your UCX migration. 
and that, that tracking information will be saved to the catalog that you define here. Now, going into more detail how this looks in the docs, if you go to the documentation, as mentioned in the previous video, you will see here the first part is installation. You will see the prerequisites here. You will see that it requires a specific version of Python, networking access, Databricks workspace administration, Databricks CLI, all of which we already talked about. It will also tell you how you can install the CLI. So you can see it shows how to install it in Mac OS with Brew install Databricks. It shows you how to install in Windows with Winget install Databricks. And it also tells you how to log in. Actually, we didn't mention this before because uh, you might already be logged in in your CLI. But if you're not logged in, before running the installation command, you will need to log in. And this is how you can log in. And finally, after you log in, what you can do is you can run Databricks Labs UCX install. So now we're going to see how this looks in practice. I'm going to run Databricks Labs install UCX. I'm going to pass my profile because in this case I have multiple authentications already created in this machine, but Databricks Labs install UCX might be enough for you. Once I run this, it will start asking me the prompts. First, it's asking me what's the inventory database, for, database where inventory will be stored. I'm going to leave it as UCX. Then it asks me where I'm going to store the tracking uh, of, of the progress, which is the catalog to store UCX artifacts in. I'm going to leave it as UCX as well. Log level, number of threads, I'm going to leave them as defaults. The backup prefix is basically used uh, for temporarily renaming some entities, mainly used during uh, group migration so that they can be renamed temporarily before being deleted. So in this case, I'm going to leave the groups with the name with the temp. Then we have how do you want to match your workspace local groups to the account level groups? I'm going to keep it as match exactly by name. I want to migrate all my workspace local groups and I want to migrate all my databases. And there's no blocking of internet access. I do not want to trigger my assessment job at this moment, but we're going to trigger it later manually for the next video. The reconciliation threshold, I'm going to leave it as default as well. And for the SQL warehouse to use, you can decide to choose a new one, but in this case, I'm going to reuse one of my existing ones. I think it's more efficient. I'm not going to be using any instance pools. And well, this is a very specific question that's only applicable if you're going to migrate certain managed tables that are located in external locations. Uh, if you're in this situation, you have three different options. In this case, I'm going to choose option zero, which means it's going to convert a managed table to an external table and migrate it. But you can see more detail in the docs about those three solutions. So then they asked about the parallelism for the Delta clones. I mentioned the default was 200. I'm going to leave it at that for now. And what's the level of auto scaling for my job clusters? I'm for the table migration, I'm going to leave it from one to 10. It gives me the option to open the config file to view my selections. I'm going to leave it as no. But if I click yes, it will basically just open it in the browser. Now it asks me if I want to open the readme file. For now, I'm going to click no. Uh, if I want to join the current installation to an existing collection, I'm going to click no. So joining to an existing collection, if, if you have more than one workspace, what you can do is group them into a collection so that you can run some commands together for both workspaces at the same time, for example. But in this case, we're only going to work in one workspace. So the installation has finished. Now I can go to my workspace. Here's my Hive Meta Store. I can update my Hive Meta Store. You can see that now my UCX database is here. This UCX database is for the inventory. Uh, then another thing that you will see once this is installed is in the workspace, because this is a global installation. If I go to applications, you will be able to see the UCX folder here with the readme file, which it asked me if I wanted to open previously. You can read more information about the workflows here. And also, if you go to workflows, you will be able to see your UCX workflows here. So I can filter only the ones that are UCX and you can see all my workflows. And we will go be going through most of them during the next videos. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.